We're now going to move on to vertigo. We're going to, first of all, go through the neuroanatomy of balance because we need to know about the role of the peripheral components and the central components of the sensation of balance. We're then going to go on to vertigo and its various causes. We're going to be looking at vestibular neuronitis, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, acoustic neuromas, and then going on to some of the central causes, vascular causes particularly in tumours. We'll then talk about how you differentiate between central and peripheral causes, and then we'll finish off this section by looking at some procedures that are relevant to this, particularly the Dix Hallpike manoeuvre and Epley's manoeuvre. And finally, we'll talk about some of the symptomatic treatments that can be used for vertigo. So let's start off by looking at the neuroanatomy of balance. Now, what I haven't included in this is detail about all of the posterior column afferents. So a lot of information on posture and balance comes to the brain and comes to the vestibular nuclei from position sense signals from throughout the body. So joint position sense and so on, very important in knowing the, the position of the body. But the bits I'm going to focus on, because these are the bits that are relevant to the various pathologies we're going to be looking at, are the inner ear and then the brain. So within the ear itself, first of all, there are the three semicircular canals on each side. They contain fluid called endolymph and a complex system that we don't need to go into in which the movement of fluid is detected. So whenever the head moves one way or another, up, down, left, right, etc., fluid moves, it causes some jelly substances to move and also some crystals called otoliths within an area known as the utricle. And this movement is detected by sensory fibres that form part of the vestibulocochlea, the eighth nerve, the vestibular part of the vestibulocochlear nerve. So that's the first thing to be aware of. The nerve itself then carries these sensory inputs through to the brain, and that nerve passes through the internal acoustic foramen into the posterior fossa. And both the vestibular and cochlear parts of the eighth nerve run next to each other before combining and entering the brain. And next to them is the facial nerve. And this is the site where acoustic neuromas develop. If we look at the brain itself, the two parts of this concerned with balance are the cerebellum, where there's a, a complex process of interconnection between neurons, and the medulla. Within the medulla, there's a series of vestibular centers. There's um, two different sets of vestibular centers, and we don't need to go into the detail of those. But they are the areas that integrate information both from visual inputs, from the inner ear inputs, and the inputs from the afferents ascending in the posterior columns of the spine, and put it together into the information that feeds into balance and so on, into the cerebellum for the compensatory movements throughout the muscular system. So those are the structures that we need to concern ourselves with primarily, the inner ear, the cerebellum, and the medulla. So what are the things that cause vertigo? Well, first of all, what is vertigo? So vertigo is a sense of a movement. It's a, an abnormal, in a, inappropriate sense of movement when movement isn't, isn't present. And of course, it's often described as dizziness by patients. And whenever patients say dizziness, of course, we have to differentiate uh, the sense of movement, vertigo, from uh, lightheadedness, which tends to be caused by the pre-syncope, syncope type causes. So when we're looking at vertigo itself, it usually can be explained by a problem in either the what's known as the peripheral system, which is the inner ear, or the central system within it, the brain itself. So let's have a look at the peripheral problems to start with that can cause vertigo. Firstly, there's vestibular neuronitis, and we'll talk more about this in a few moments, an issue to do with the actual vestibular nerve itself. Secondly, we've got benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, which is an issue to do with the otoliths within the utricle and the posterior semicircular canal. Thirdly, there's Meniere's disease, which is an issue to do with pressure within the hemolymph. 
then we can have damage to the whole structure from chronic infection within the middle ear, suppurative otitis media. And then finally, talk about acoustic neuroma, which is a benign tumour affecting the vestibular cochlear nerve. So these are common causes of vertigo coming from the periphery, coming from the inner ear. In fact, the top three of these account for something like 95% of peripheral causes of vertigo.